बड़ी Okay, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you are watching it. You might be watching uh, later on in the week, like I know a lot of you have been doing so far um, throughout this course. Um, so I hope everybody's had a good weekend. You know, I hope um, if the weather's been nice, we've been able to maybe, you know, make the most of it, get out and about, get a little bit of fresh air, maybe. Um, you know, especially when we think about how sort of uh, restricted we've been over the last couple of springs and summer times and um, that's for sure and um, so yeah we are back we're on week four um, of our developing skills for employment personal fitness and well-being course um, as i promised last week we're going to start having a little bit of a look at some some different fitness kit this morning so different fitness equipment um, where you might see it where you might not um, or where you might come across it more often I was just saying, Gaz is in the chat. Morning, Gaz. Hope you've had a good weekend, buddy. Uh, hope you're well. Um, so, yeah, just, just looking at different bits of um, fitness equipment. Some of it you might have seen before. Some of it might be quite new to you. It might be words that you've heard before, names of stuff, but you're not really sure, you know, why you would use that over a different bit of kit or, you know, even just the benefits of um, certain bits of equipment as well. So we're going to have a little, bit of a, a little bit of a look through that this morning. So... Um, just to just before we really jump into that, just going to point your uh, attention to the little description box underneath the video, as always. So in there, we've got my email if you need it at any point. We've got a link to um, our, our Google Drive where any sort of supplementary learner info that you might need, learner handbook, safeguarding, um, what to do with concerns, stuff like that. And of course, links to our social media pages as well. Um, so as always... Give us a little follow on there if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with Media Savvy, um, especially at headquarters. There's all sorts going on at the minute. So, yeah, give us a little follow on there and, and stay tuned. Of course, as always as well, we've got a little link to the survey for you to fill out at the end of the session. And um, like I say, the, the workout video as well for you to, uh, to, for you to have a little go. Like I say, it, it might be worth it if, if you've got a nice day while you start watching this. You know, you're looking out the window, the sun's shining, you want to go for a walk whatever you know totally totally fine and um, it's just nice to have those options for you know we wake up one morning it's a little bit gray wet miserable or whatever and um, you know and we it's nice to have something where we can do a little bit of, be a little bit more active in the house as well um you know at the same time the workouts that you could take to the park with you if you did want to do outside as well um but yeah, guys, all of that information is in the um, description box underneath the video, as always. Um, so check it out. Um, and remember that even when you come back to these sessions, these same links will still work. Um, right, guys, let's get into it then. Um, so a little bit of a little bit of a recap on last week as well. Um, just before we before we go diving straight in, so we looked quite a lot at um, health and safety last week. Uh, manual lifting a little bit as well. Um, we were looking at sort of different hazards um, or potential hazards, what risks they posed um, in different work environments. So we looked at, you know, an office environment. We looked at a home environment. We talked quite a lot as well about a fitness environment and the sort of um, potential hazards and risk we, we might find there, you know, be it a, a gym or, a, you know, a fitness class where you're in a community centre or a sports hall or something. I mean... There's this extra that we you can even add on top of that as well where it comes to health and safety, even just, just going out for a walk, public footpaths, stuff like that. You know, obviously, you want pro proper footwear on um, and then little things as well to help just sort of keep yourself safe as well. It might be high vis if you're out walking at night. Um, it might be a little GPS or having something set up on your phone so people can find you if they need to or, or whatever it might be. But lots and lots of ways that we need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves um, safe um, when we're exercising because, you know, um, even if we're going to just minor case, you pick up an injury or some niggles or some aches or some pains or something, um, you know, that's sort of like, that, that's, that's sort of like best case scenario when it comes to injuries in, in the fitness environment. And even that's going to stop you exercising, really. You know, if you, you know, hurt, hurt your hand, hurt your foot, sprain a knee, whatever it is, um, that can really impact your ability to, you know, exercise, be active, um, and specifically 
try to reach your goals and and and, and pursue your goals. Um, so for a lot of reasons, of course, we want to be making sure that we're keeping ourselves safe, but everybody else around us as well. Um, so if that's something that you want to sort of revisit, definitely um, go back and check out last week's session again. Um, we looked at risk assessment and the idea of, you know, we can't always totally remove a hazard. Um, sometimes we just need to reduce the risk um, or try and nullify that risk a little bit. You know, things like PPE, like we were just talking about, you know, um, if you're working around chemicals that you need, you can't get you can't just get rid of the chemicals from the workplace. You know, that's where goggles and gloves and overalls and stuff like that come in. So we looked at a little bit of a risk assessment where that will come into play as well. Um, and then we came sort of back to some of the um, to some of the uh, sort of occupational stuff that we've been looking at and to do with the volunteering as well. Um, strengths and areas for improvement based on different job roles. So you're thinking, right, OK, um, what makes what makes me sort of good, a good candidate for this job or for this position, you know, with with whatever I'm, I would be being asked to do, whatever they're looking for. Um, you know, maybe they're, they're saying, you know, you need good patience and good people skills. You might be thinking, yeah, okay, that's me. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I can do that. I'm good at that. But then there might be some areas where I might say, okay, you need to be, um, you know, it might be working around money. For example, it might be working in a bank. And yeah, you need people skills, you need patience. But at the same time, you need a little bit of... Um, you need to be pretty good with numbers. Um, you might be able to sit there and say, right, okay, I would like to, you know, apply for that job. I'd, I'd like to look at that position a little bit more. That's an area for improvement. So let's see how I can improve it. You know, can we can we do some um, additional learning or, or, or pick up some new habits that are going to just improve our sort of math skills in, in, in that case, for example. So strengthen areas uh, for improvement personally, you know, for different job roles. Um, and thinking about how suitable you are for the job. But then we also flipped that on its head as well and looked at how suitable is the job for you? You know, it's something that um, it really pays to stop and think about. Um, you know, how suitable is the job for you? Like, yeah, you might be, you might have all the skills that, that, that they're looking for or all the qualities that they're looking, looking for. Um, you know, like we talked about last week, positives could be good pay, extra holidays, um, set hours, you know, what is good for some people might not be good for somebody else, you know. Um, for me, I always used to, um, I used to like having a couple of days off during the week when I was personal training and I would work on a weekend. Yeah, I would have a, like a Tuesday and a Thursday off or whatever it was. So that worked well for me to go to the shops while everybody else was at work and, and, and do those little bits. That worked really well. And um, for other people, you know, if you've got kids and you've got childcare to think about, you might need a job where the hours are purely, what, 9 till, nine till 3, 9 till 4-ish, where um, your kids are going to be at school throughout the day. It might be to do with the work and hours, you know. There might be a job that... It might be a shift pattern. You might do, like, a week of days, a week of um, backs, and then a week of nights. But again, that's not suitable for everybody as well, you know. So thinking about, yeah, like how suitable am I for the job, but also how suitable is the job for me and, and for what I'm looking for right now as well. And, and like I say, it's an important bit of reflecting to do. Um, so, yeah, really interesting session last week. Um, and if, if you still got the link handy and you want to go check it out, that link will work. If not, let me know and I'll send it over to you again. Um, and you can go back and, and you can revisit that whenever you want. Um, okay, then, so what are we going to cover today? So we are going to be looking at um, fitness equipment used in the circuit training session. Yeah, so a lot of kit that you that you might see or will commonly see used in the circuit training session. Um, and we'll be uh, discussing our circuit training cards a little bit. And following today's session, you guys can go away and actually start putting pen to paper and start getting those done. Um, and we can get those sort of ticked off, like marked off, really. Um so just to sort of recap on those circuit training cards, um, of course, we looked there last week. You might have like the name of the exercise, um, a little diagram showing you um, how to do the exercise. Maybe it's even a little description, a bit of text. There might be a number, what tells you what number in the circuit that exercise is. Um, you might have 
an indicator of what muscles you use, an indicator of what equipment you're going to need just for that individual exercise. Um, so um, muscles used, equipment used, a picture, description, health and safety considerations is a good one to think about as well. Um, and how to modify the circuit to progress or regress. So a big thing that I always used to try and have in my mind when I had a circuit laid out, or when I was given when I when I gave anybody an exercise, really, I would say, um, or I would have in my mind, right? How do I make this easier? How do I make it harder? Just in case somebody gets that exercise that needs it to be easier or harder, you know, um. It's, it's, it's helpful to be able to say, like, right, okay, let's just take this back a step, you know. It might not be rather than a full squat, you know. It might be it might be a little half squat or something like that. Um, you know, it might be, right, pick up some extra weight to make it harder, put down the weights to make it easier. It might be, right, let's use a different bit of equipment, um, you know. So, yeah, I always like to have an idea of, you know, how would I make this exercise harder, how would I make it easier, if somebody needed it to be, um, could you even put that on the circuit card as well? So they can decide rather than you needing to go and say, right, instead of doing that, try this, you know, that's, that's, that's a really good idea. Having the, um, progressions and regressions on there, you know, how to make it harder how to, and then how to make it easier as well. So lots of information can go on these training cards and, you'll realize, I mean, you've only got to use them once and you, you, you soon realize how much they help keep the circuit ticking over, um, especially if you're the one trying to deliver it. You know, like I say, it's, all, it's always paid to have these sort of uh, materials on, on hand, really. Um, okay, then, guys, cool. So we have got a little word jumble to do um, coming up in just a second. So what you're going to do, you're going to look at the letters, try and rearrange them, to um, name some fitness equipment. Um, okay, cool. And then, yeah, for the following pages after that, we will be um, looking at different bits of equipment, some of the exercises that you can perform using that equipment, what muscles those exercises might use, um, how to modify each exercise to make it easier and harder as well, um, health and safety considerations, and then how you might talk somebody through each exercise as well. So all stuff that you'll hopefully be able to capture um, and, and, and use in those circuit, uh, those circuit training cards. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to give it um, give it a few minutes. See how many of these you can um, uns unscramble. See how many of these words you can, um, if we can figure out what they are. So they're all pieces of um, fitness equipment. Yeah, so we've got 12 there, 12 there, um, all pieces of fitness equipment. We'll give it a few minutes, see how many of these we might be able to um, unjumble and um, start to put together. Because, yeah, there's, there's, there's so many different bits of um, fitness equipment that you, that you might see, you know. I'm, I've been on been working on gym floors before, and I see all bits, and I'm like, is, is, is that... Is that um, meant to be there or somebody left it there. Um, what's that? I've never seen that in other gyms before. Um, you know, so I mean, there's obviously new new research, new things coming through, or this gets you better results, right? Okay, um, how can we sort of bring that in? Uh, is there a bit, a bit of equipment that helps us do that, you know? There's always um, obviously new, new products coming through, new ways of training coming through. Um, and these days we see so much stuff that like you wouldn't have walked into a gym 20 years ago and found like medicine balls and battle ropes and TRX ropes and um, trampolines and tires for flipping and stuff like that. You know, that, that's come on so much more in the last 10, 10, 20 years. A lot of it, what we call kind of functional training exercises that sort of mimic what we do day to day, you know, like when it comes to old school weightlifting, like, yeah, we might be able to sit and do that 10 times, but how, how, how often do you use that throughout your daily life? You know, functional trains are like moving, twisting, 
um, that sort of thing. So, of course, with that comes a whole load of new kit. Um, and if you've never seen any of it before, you know you could potentially get to a gym these days, look at it and half the stuff you've never seen before. And again, it's like, right, okay, um, why would I use that instead of that? Um, what's the benefit of using that instead of that? What's this even for? You know, how do I use it in the first place? Never mind figuring out what's best for, for doing this. Um, so let's start breaking these down and having a little look, guys. And um, guys, by all means, shout out if you've uh, if you've got any of them ahead of us. Uh, so number one is a um, is a skipping rope. So um, probably um, the first thing that I think of when it comes to a skipping rope is being on the old uh, on the old playground back at school. Um, or, or even younger than that, to be honest. Skipping rope, I know that um, boxers use them a lot in terms of conditioning and cardio as well. So maybe, maybe you've used one since you left school. Nine times out of ten, when I say it to people, here's a skipping rope, there you go. The first thing they say is, oh, I haven't had one of these. I haven't touched one of these since I was at school. Um, good bits of kit. Not really expensive. Don't take up much. Uh, don't take up much space, um, and uh yeah, it's a good form of cardio. You know, you do it for a couple of minutes, and you'll soon feel your heart rate starting to come up. Um, so that's that's our skipping rope. We'll get in there. Uh, we'll get into pros and cons in a little bit. Uh, so number one, skipping rope. Number two was medicine ball. Um, so medicine ball is essentially. It's it's a ball, you know, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It is a ball. It's normally filled with gel, sand. Um, those are the most common two, um, really, gel or sand. They give it weight. Um, and that weight is normally sort of indicated on the ball. So if it weighs four kilograms, the ball should say four kilograms. And then, yeah, it's really good for getting in sort of, it works good for functional training because it, it morphs to the shape of your body a little bit, you know, around your hands. If you hug it into your chest, it's not like you're trying to hug a, like a dumbbell that's just going to dig into you. You know, you can get it nice and close. You can do some squats with it or whatever it is. Medicine ball slams, um, Russian twists, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and we'll get a look at medicine balls in a little bit as well. So if there's any of these that you're thinking, I've never even seen these before. I don't know what you're even talking about. Bear with us because in, in on the next couple of slides, we'll start looking through and we'll see some of this equipment as well. Um, number three is trampoline. So again, might not be something that you've uh, used or even seen since you were a kid. Um, trampolines, again, good form of cardio. Um, quite good for your leg and core muscles as well, actually, because depending what you're doing on them. Um, I actually used to teach a trampoline in class, and it wasn't like backflips and somersaults like you probably think of. Um, it was more to do with, right, all the stuff that we can do in the gym on a normal floor, press-ups, mountain climbers, squats, um, are all so much harder on a trampoline. Like, you wouldn't have thought it, but the, the, the trampoline tries to move um, and actually makes a lot of these exercises harder. Um, so you can you can work harder, burn more calories as well. Um, okay, in fact, um, if any of you have ever done Mel's boogie bounce class, you'll know what I'm talking about. Everybody gets their own little trampoline um, with like a little handlebar on the front so you don't fall off. And and yeah, it looks like it, an absolute blast, to be honest. Um, okay, number four. Number four we've got is an exercise mat. So something that you'll probably lay down on the floor before you start doing kneeling exercises, any exercises where you lay it down. It's just nice to have that little bit of cushioning um, either under your back or under your knees or, or, or wherever it is, under your elbows if you're planking. It's just nice to have that little extra bit of um, padding as well. Uh, number five is a battle rope. So it might be one that you've heard of before. It might not. Um, Again, we'll have a we'll have a look um shortly. But a battle rope is essentially a big piece of rope. Think think like a skipping rope, but like um like an ultra skipping rope. Um normally goes round and is like anchored round something. So say sort of like um 
again, I used to do it around like um, maybe just some of the machines at the gym. I'd tie it around the bottom of the squat rack, come back, have a bit of distance, and then you've got two big, heavy bits of rope. You know, you've got hold of them, and you can do like snakes where you're moving your arms up and down as fast as you can. You can do slams where you're slamming these battle ropes. And again, it's 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 functional, but it it challenges your body so much. There's so much muscle work, and at once, and your heart and your lungs. Like I say, your heart rate will, will, will soon come up. Um, okay, and number six is it's not scone, unfortunately. It's not scone, it is cones. Uh, so number six, cones. You could use them for um, you know, again, you've probably seen them like in, in PE or um when you look at obviously like a lot of sports training and warming up before the game and stuff, they might have some cones set out. Um just like a little disc you can put on the floor and it's either going to mark out like a space or it's going to um, be like a prop for you, like it's something for you to go and touch. You know, if you're doing shuttle runs or you're doing sprints, you might sprint from one cone to another. Or like I say, it might just be to kind of mark off a space, right? This is where the tire flips happen. You know, if you step inside this sort of cone square, just be aware that, there's, there's moving tires or medicine balls or whatever it is. Um, quite good for even sort of like zigzags, good for agility and working on that agility, which is, of course, just changing direction quickly without losing balance, which is easier said than done. And number seven is a step. Number seven is a, is, it's a step. Um, a lot of us have, you know, probably half a at least a dozen of them at home or, or around about a dozen of them at home. But we're thinking more sort of like a, like a specific separate single step that you could use in the gym. Think back to if you've ever seen like one of the old, um, like aerobics classes, like step aside where you're stepping on the box, stepping off the box, coming sideways, stepping on the box, off the box. Um, step can be a really good, again, it's like a little tool that you can use. It's like a prop. You know, you can use it. Um, you can use it as a step and actually step on it. You can use it as um, you can do dips off the side. So you've got your feet on the floor, but your hands are on the step. You can do dips and like lowering your bum down towards the floor. Um, steps again. The beauty of the ones in the gym is that it's a single step. So I mean, I've even had my hands on the step and jumping feet over side to side. Um, as opposed to obviously don't have that option with the stairs in the house. But yeah, um, anything where we're obviously climbing um, is, is burning extra calories as well. Um, and a little, I, I used to love, I used to really rely on the um, little exercise step um, quite a lot. I used to like putting it in somebody's session. Uh, okay, then number eight, we have got a kettlebell. Number eight is a kettlebell. Um, where the name comes from, I'm not entirely sure. Um, now I think about it, I've, I've never seen one sh sh shape like a kettle, and I've never seen a kettle shape like one of them. Um, anyway, so kettlebell, again, it, because it's round, because of the shape of it, you know, it, it's a little bit more sort of, you can get a little bit more snug to your body if you want to get it in close to your chest and do like some goblet squats, um, like where you're holding some weight without it being on like your neck or your shoulders, really. Um Kettlebells again, like obviously kettlebell swings and um, Turkish get ups, um, so many different exercises you can do, quite explosive exercises usually. Um, but yeah, again, they're going to come in different weights. Um, become really popular over the last 10 years. Um, really, really common in gyms, and you, you, you do or see kettlebell only classes these days as well. Um, really good bit of kit, really good bit of kit. Okay, number nine, number nine, we have got a barbell. A barbell. So the barbell is the big long bar that you'll slide the plates on either side. You know that you'll see them lifting in the Olympics above their heads, or you'll see people doing it with a squat with a bar on their back. That's a barbell. Yeah, that's a barbell. One long bar with the weights on um, either end. Okay, that was a barbell. Number 10 is ladders. Um, so ladders, um, again, a couple of different uses. It depends what kind of ladders we've got. You know, I remember, um, again, PA at school, like the walls of the hall were like lined with essentially a climbing frame. 
Um, so not not entirely a ladder, but similar sort of thing. Even just climbing up to the top of there and back down, you know, it's it's hard work, it's tiring work. Um, climbing a ladder, or you can actually get a ladder, or in this case, like a rope ladder, lay them down on the floor. And, you know, you can do like some footwork drills and, and stuff like that. You know, again, you see it quite a lot in sort of like sports training, um, especially like, like um, again, basketball, football, where you've got to think about your footwork quite a lot. Um, they do like these footwork drills using the ladder, um, but, but laid down on the floor. Um, okay, number 11, uh, second off last. So number 11 is a dumbbell. So a dumbbell... Um, is the little weights that instead of the one long bar, it's two separate weights. Yeah. So what you'll see people doing like bicep curls with um, like that sort of thing, they tend to be dumbbells. A weight in each hand. Yeah. And um, if you've got one in each hand, it's got to be dumbbells. Um, you'd be doing really well to have a barbell in each hand and do anything overly productive, uh, really. Not just, just just because of how really long they are and like uh, be a nightmare, um, but yeah, um, dumbbells, barbells, um, again, there's times really to to use each, and that might depend on the individual as well. Um, okay, and then number twelve was a resistance band, um, so I've I talk about them quite a lot. Um, you might have heard me mention them before. It's it's a big elastic band, and it's either you know a long strip that you might be able to, you know, get a hold of and pull it apart, that sort of thing. Or it might actually be like a loop, like an actual resistance, uh, like, a, like an elastic band is. Um, and, you know, you might put it around your ankles and do like some sideways steps um, amongst other things as well. Quite a lot you can do with resistance bands. And again, you know, don't take up much space, quite cheap and cost effective. Um, and, you know, again, all of the training that I've done since, since the first lockdown kicked in has been um, either cardio where I've been out walking um, it's been body weight exercises, or if I've needed extra resistance, resistance bands, you know, so that is quite possibly the only item on this list that I have in the house. And I've done all of my exercise with it um, two years now. Um, okay then guys, so how many of those did you get? How many of those did you struggle with? How many of them have you heard before? How many of them were new to you as well? How many, like, was it the first time that you heard, that you're hearing about them? Um, okay guys, let's uh, spin on then and we can have a look at some of these bits of kit. Um, so we can picture them, visualize them a little bit more. Maybe, you know, start putting a few names to, uh, to the, to the visuals, you think, oh, yes, I have seen that in the gym, or that's what that is, you know. And um, so let's start working, working our way through and just talking about um, some of those different points um, that we mentioned earlier on as well. So on the left-hand side there, we've got our uh, resistance band. So it looks as though um, these ladies have got some kind of, they've obviously got the band above their heads. It looks like they're pulling it down to the side. So to me, because they've got their hands above their head and they're pulling this way, that's going to be exercising like in there that's in charge of that pulling so you know you could do 10 pulls on one side 10 pulls on the other um you can even maybe even get away with doing both pulls at the same time like both sides at the same time um you know so much you can do with the resistance band like i say you can you can bring it down to chest height and instead of going like that or like that you can come down to chest height and do the same work a totally different group of muscles yeah um like i say you could um put it on the floor like you could stand on one end and hold the other end and do bicep curls or overhead extensions depending on how tight the resistance band is how much slack have you got you can maybe do some overhead extensions and put them put it on the floor get hold of one end again stand on the other end Front raise, yeah, for the front of your shoulder. Side raise for the side of your shoulder. It's all to do with um, where it's anchored, really. So, you know, making sure that it's not, some of it's not moving. You know, you're, you're in control of the band and it's not like out of control. And just thinking about, right, okay, to move through this range, 
against extra resistance because that's what the band does what what muscle is going to work you know like using that example again like right okay hands above my head coming down this way i can feel that it's coming from in here yeah if i bring that to shoulder height it starts working a whole totally different group of muscles as well so um there's not really one specific way to use a resistance band um you know, like I say, it's it's more a case of just um, using using the um, initiative a little bit. Um, resistance band. So I'm just going to go back to that last slide. So um, obviously, depending on what exercise we do, is going to change up what muscles get used. Be it delts, you know, pecs. This one there that they're doing will be using their lats. You know, so they're pulling down from the side, working those lats. Um, it might be triceps, it might be biceps, um, you know, so it depends really on the exercise that's getting done. Um, so when it comes to health and safety considerations with a resistance band, the big one is, of course, it's elastic. It's, it, it, could, it could potentially perish over time and start to, start to wear out, um, in which case, you know, it, it's at risk of um, snapping. Um, you know, it, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me before. Um, but yeah, before we start using it, always make sure you know check it over. Is there a little bit of a nick? You know, luckily the day that mine snapped, it was down at ankle height and not up at face height. Um, and the reason why it was down at ankle height was because I'd looked at it when I picked it up and realised there was a there was like a tiny little um tear just starting to come in one of the edges and I went to do an exercise uh, and it, it just went like pop straight away um, so yeah a little bit of wear and tear um, general wear and tear but but yeah you do need to keep an eye on them before you use them or maybe even just when you're done using it and just before you put it back just give it a once over right okay um, we're good to go sort of thing I'm, I don't need to worry about it snapping and that's the big one for resistance bands. Um, maybe maybe another one um, that well, we could think about as well would be, of course, when you're not using it, when you're done, um, just be careful where you leave it. It might be yours, um, but, you know, you might turn and talk to somebody and it's still on the floor. Somebody's come comes past doing shuttle runs or farmer's walks or walking lunges and whatever it is, and they trip over it. Um, that's, that's, that's no good. You know, we don't want that. Um, so, so, so yeah, just thinking about again where you're putting it. It might, it might not be yours. It might be the gym's, and you might, you might think, right, okay, I'm done with that. I'll leave that there. And again, somebody might, might come along and and trip on it as well. So, um, just making sure we're putting them away when we're done as well. It tends to either be, um, like a box, um, where the resistance bands live, or some gyms might have like a hook on the wall where you might, um. Like I say, you might you might you might hang them so they're not down at foot height where anybody can sort of get snagged on them. Um, okay, so uh, next one. So we've done, in fact, I'll try and make this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. So we've done um, resistance band. So over on the right, this is more the sort of thing I was talking about when we were um, when we said step earlier on. Yeah. So this sort of step more like an exercise step it's got um usually got a bit like a bit of rubber on the top for extra grip um and you can actually put these little sort of in this case it's like little purple purple pillows under each side and raise the height of the step as well so when it comes to progressing and regressing you know to make it easier can you make the step lower to make it harder can you can you make the step a little bit higher depending on what the exercise is but that would apply to a lot of them you know, if you're jumping over them, a higher step's going to be harder. You know, I used to do one where I would turn side on, so I'm looking down the step, um, and then do sort of like jump off, put my feet either side, jump on, land on the box. Yeah, feet either side, land on. Again, uh, a, a higher step is going to be harder. Even just doing what this person's doing here by the looks is putting a foot on, stepping up, maybe driving the opposite knee through as high as you can, and then coming back down, step off, swap feet, do the same on the other leg. That's going to be harder with a higher step. 
easier with a lower step as well. So that's that's um, a pretty simple way to to make things a bit easier or a bit harder on the step, depending on why you might need to. You know, you might still get there, and somebody might, you know, um, it might be a balance thing. It might even be a confidence thing. You know, they might want something to hold on to as well while they're while they're stepping up, especially if they've not done it before. Um, again, some of it's going to depend on the individual, um, but it is, like I say, quite a simple way of making those exercises a bit harder or a bit easier. Um, again, there's normally a place to stack them. They tend to stack on top of each other, and the pillows obviously stack on top of each other as well. So you might have one big stack of steps, and then you might have two similarly sized stacks of um, obviously the sort of like little booster bits. Um, but yeah, health and safety. Again, obviously make sure that they all go away when you're done with them. You don't want to leave them on the gym floor, either the step or the little booster bits. Um, of course, making sure that before you use them yourself, you know, make sure that these bits are in nice and snug as well. You know, you don't want to go and do a jump. You jump, you land on the top of the step and you realize that these aren't clipped in properly and the step slides out from underneath you as well. So you want to make sure that everything's nice and secure, nice and sturdy, including the bit of rubber on top of the step. I have seen them start to lift a little bit over time. And again, if you go to jump on them, you don't want to be catching your, your foot on a, um, on a lip on the way up as well. So again, when it comes to health and safety with the step, Obviously, check the area around you as well. Um, ideally, you want to be in an area where if you were to fall or lose your balance, that you're not going to fall into the way of something else or onto something else or potentially hurt yourself by falling into a, a different gym machine or something like that, especially if somebody's using it. So again, just being aware of our space, what's around us. Um, and the same could probably be said for the resistance band as well. Again, exercise dependent. Um, if I'm going to get all of his resistance band and start going like that, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to check who's behind us first, you know. And um, so always making sure that we're checking our, our space and considering other people that might be in that environment as well. You know, if you're training at home, maybe there's other people to think about. Maybe you've got pets to think about. You know, you don't want to be rolling over the cat or the dog while you've got a barbell on your back. And um, so, again, just thinking about your, like the space that you've got. But yeah, other than that, with a resistance step, it's put them away properly. Um, obviously, don't don't just leave them out. Make sure everything's nice and snug and secure before we start using it. And yeah, just watch out for um, obviously wear and tear, cracks in plastic as well. Um, same as a resistance band, just give everything a good once over and make sure you're happy with it before you start using it as well. And um, could go a long way and reduce and eliminate a lot of problems. Um, okay then, so moving on. Next one, we have got um, some dumbbells. So dumbbells, like I said, one weight in each hand. They tend to be... Um, so you're going to get you're get one of two types of, um, of dumbbells. So you'll either get the ones that are essentially a little metal bar that you put weights on either side, Screw the caps on, get them nice and tight, and that's going to be your weight, and you can do the same on the other one. Yeah. Or you're going to get more like what we're looking at here and what we can see in this picture. So um, these are, I guess, preloaded dumbbells. So these would be, it says on the end of them, they are two kilograms each. Yeah, so two kilograms each, um, and you, you, you couldn't change that weight. You know, these bits on the end, they they don't screw off, you know. You're not going to change the weight of these two kilogram um, dumbbells. Uh, you might these you'll normally see these sorts of things maybe sold as a pack. You know, you might get a, a set of twos, a set of fours, and a set of sixes, or something like that. You might get a um, what we call a dumbbell tree. So you know they might have like ones at the bottom, obviously in pairs, ones, twos, threes, fours, maybe it's all the way down to ten. Um, so you might have seen those before. Um, you might have seen the ones that you actually have to change the weights on yourself. Either way, as long as it's a, a weight in each hand, um, it's it's a dumbbell, really. Um, so, yeah, different different things to consider as well, given um, 
which of those we're talking about, obviously health and safety. Again, always check check your space before you start doing side raises, front raises, whatever it is. Just make sure you've got the space to do it first. You know, I have done it before where you're like in the middle of doing an exercise and you bang your finger or jam your finger on something and it's just not a good time. It's just really not. So like I say, check your space around you before we start um, exercising or whatever it is that we're going to be doing. Um, of course, make sure we put them down properly as well. The amount of people that you see get to the end of the set and then just chuck them, you know, I think because they are weights and they have their purpose, I think it's, it's really easy to forget that they still weigh the same even when you're not lifting them, you know, and those 20 kilogram dumbbells you've just been bicep curling with is going to break somebody's foot if it lands on them or, or rolls into them. You know, if you put them down, because some of them are perfectly circled. These ones, not so much. These don't look like they'd roll as far. But if they were circled, you put them down, off they go. Um, same again, it's easy for somebody to trip on them as well. But yeah, if it's heavy enough, it can actually roll into somebody's, like the side of somebody's leg or the side of somebody's foot and cause a bit of damage as well. Um, so those those are probably the, the biggest, um, when it comes to dumbbells, like I say, just don't leave them out, don't. You know, if you're using a couple of different weights for different exercises, maybe you're doing a circuit, you know, if you're using the fours, you know, make sure that the tens aren't over there, the eights aren't over there, where's the sixes at, where's the twos? Um, you know, I've seen whole sections of the gym cordoned off at times, like, oh, I'm exercising there, and just all the different dumbbells out. And I'm like, like I'm making somebody else use these as well. Um, but but yeah, and again, I've seen people do that and then walk off at the end of the set and not even put them back. So just be aware that they might be sort of around your feet or they might roll off if you are using them. Um, in terms of what exercises you can do, again, there's not really a right or a wrong. There's not really one specific exercise that you can do. Um, you think about it, when it comes to weights, all you're doing is, is making you know, you're adding weight to you, to yourself so that whatever you're about to do is, is harder. Yeah. That's the idea of it being weights. So in the grand scheme of things, you know, it doesn't matter whether you've got a 10 kilogram barbell on your back or a five kilogram dumbbell in each hand. Sometimes it's just personal preference. Yeah. Sometimes it, it, it really is. Um, other times, you might be better off using a dumbbell rather than a barbell, um, but we'll get on to that in, in just a little bit. But but dumbbells, like I say, you could do um, you could do bicep curls, you can do overhead extensions, yeah, um, you can do, uh, what else might you do? Front raise, side raise, um, rear flies, you can lay on your back and do chest flies, Um you can hold on to these and do squats. You can hold on to these and do lunges. You can hold on to these and do calf raises. Um, so much, like I say, it's it's just a way of adding adding weight. Um, and again, you can make it harder. Can you up the weight? Can you make it easier by lowering the weight? Um, it would be the most general way to do it. If you're doing bicep curls with 10 kilograms in each hand, you know, your form's going, you're struggling to get the full rep. You know, I would be, I would go over to somebody and say, put them down. There's the next weight down. Is a little bit lighter. That should be more manageable. You're still working. You're still working hard, but at least you're getting full reps and your form's good, and you're not going to hurt yourself in a different way. Sometimes it is actually better to go lighter, especially as you start to fatigue and you start to struggle. And um, but dumbbells, yeah, even then you can lay on your back and hold a dumbbell on your chest and do some little crunches. Um. I've seen people do planks with a dumbbell on their back or on their lower back. Um, depends what 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 area you're trying to work out. Really, what muscles are you trying to work? Because that'll that'll change from from exercise to exercise. If you're doing a bicep curl, you work in your biceps. Yeah. If you're doing an overhead extension, you work in your tricep. Yeah. So again, it depends what exercise you're doing um, as to what muscles you're going to be doing. Yeah. You know, front raise. Front delt's going to be working. Side raids, side delt's going to be working. Yeah, pec flies, pecs are going to be working. Um, so yeah, lots that we can do with a dumbbell. And um, they are quite a versatile bit of kit. I would argue you could do more with dumbbells than you can with a barbell. You know, you could do a um, you could do a dumbbell deadlift. 
like you would with a barbell, really. But um, you're not going to see somebody doing a barbell side raise, um, or very, very few people. But anyway, yeah, that's um, that that that's dumbbells. You know, maybe you've seen them before. They they are probably one of the more typical pieces of gym kit, I guess you could say. Um, like I say, if you see, even you watch a TV program or even a cartoon, if somebody's lifting, you know, they tend to be lifting these weights or um, or the big or the big barbell. Um, and again, we'll, we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, okay, skipping ropes. So skipping ropes, like I mentioned earlier, um, really small, really cost effective. Um, don't take up much space, easily transportable. So if you wanted to go to the park, if you wanted to go, you know, anywhere, anywhere, take it in the back garden and do it, especially if, as the weather's picking up a little bit, you might want to go in the back garden. Um, so again, skipping rope. So skipping rope, main thing you're going to do with a skipping rope, let's be honest, is skip. Yeah, so skipping, you've got your arms out to the side, you've got that little sort of circular motion going on. Um, it's quite good for your shoulders, quite good for your shoulders, but in general, it's good, and, and your calves as well, I guess, because you're on your toes the whole time. But the big thing is, it brings your heart rate up. Yeah, so if you're skipping, you're going to be using a skipping rope, um, and like I say, it's going to have more of a cardiovascular effect than anything else, so it's more to do with your breathing, your heart, asking uh, your body, sorry, asking for the extra oxygen and your heart and lungs needing to work harder to deliver that. Um, so that's what skipping is good for, really. You know, if you wanted to come along and work your muscles and help them grow or get stronger, skipping rope might not be something that you would go for. But if you were looking to burn a little bit of fat or burn some calories um, while also getting cardiovascularly fitter, skipping rope could be something that you could, um, that you could go to. Um, so... Big one with skipping rope, I would say, again, always check your space. Um, you probably need more space for a skipping rope than you do for most of the bits of kit on this list. Probably not all of them. Battle ropes you need a bit of space for as well. But skipping rope, again, like I've been caught by a skipping rope as I've walked past somebody, even just around the wrist, around the knuckles or whatever. That, that hurts. You know, a lot of the time the rope is covered in like covered in like a plastic and it do, it's not half moving at some speed, so if it whips you, it doesn't half whip you. Um, again, check where you leave it, put it away properly. Again, a lot of places will have like a um, like a hook or a shelf um, that you can that you can put your your skipping ropes on, or just to get them out of the way. And before you start using them, I would say again. Check your surrounding, not for other people, but if you get your feet caught in your skipping rope and you go to fall, what you're falling onto, yeah? Just making sure that there is no dumbbells or barbells or anything that you could fall onto, um, pretty much. Uh, skipping rope, again, isn't necessarily for everybody. You know, if somebody came into the gym and said, look, Rob, I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight, um, or, or I'm, let's be honest, Rob, I'm trying to lose quite a lot of weight. Um, you know, I'm already getting pain from my knees just from walking. And the last thing I'm then going to tell that person to do is start jumping on the spot or otherwise, you know. Um, so skipping rope, not necessarily for everybody. If you've got a bad back, you know, you might not want the compression or, or the impact on your spine every time you're landing. Um, so it's not necessarily for everybody. What you can do, though, is simulate skipping so ditch the rope but you've still got your arms out like you're skipping you've still obviously bouncing your knees as though you're you're getting the rhythm and trying to get that jump in there but you don't have to jump and you're not worried about hitting yourself with a skipping rope that still works that still burns calories um i think actually i'm sure i actually saw a product the other day that was essentially like a um it was like a drumstick in each hand but it was sort of like floppy and moved um to to simulate a skipping rope movement um something to hold on to, something to get the wrist motions going um, and something to help it feel more natural, but also nothing to actually hit yourself around the legs with or trap yourself with as well. So, um, yeah, just, just bear in mind, I guess, that a skipping rope isn't for everybody. Again, a way you can make it a little bit easier, just take the skipping rope out. Um, in terms of making it harder, you know, that person might just need a push to go a little bit faster. Um, 
you might want to set them a challenge and see how many uh, how many skips they can actually do in the time that they've got set out. Um, other than just going outright faster, it's, it's 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 kind of tough to make skipping skipping any harder. Um, for most, it's hard enough anyway. The coordination and the timing, um, myself included. Um, right, right, right. So dumbbells and skipping rope done. Um, okay then. So next we have got um a medicine ball or a couple of medicine balls. Um, so what we've got here, like I said earlier on, you can see the number on them as well. So that's a nine kilogram medicine ball. So the whole thing weighs nine kilograms. It's probably got, um, given experience, I'd say that's probably got sand inside it, but they will have sand. They'll have gel um, just to give them just to give them that weight. Um, so a little fun fact about medicine balls, actually, while we're on and while we're on the subject, um, the guy that sort of, I say, came up with them, um, I guess spheres have been in existence for a long time. But this guy, um, he was he was using them um, to demonstrate the uh, the effect of exercise on um, I can't remember exactly whether it was depression or mental health in general, um, and found that the, that they were that they were working. Exercise in general works um, and is probably the least used antidepressant in the world, um, but. That's a conversation for a different day, that one. Um, but yeah, um, like I say, they'll they'll have the weight on them. Um, and like a really, really good for again functional sort of training. You can get them in close to your body, you can hug them. Um, like I say, hug them in close, do some squats with them, medicine ball slams, of course. It, it just fits like the shape of your hand really nicely. Um medicine balls again there's a few different things you could do with them i used to come into like um i'd come into a plank and i'd have like the medicine ball sort of just behind my wrist and i would raise my left hand so i've just got this hand on the floor roll the ball across stop it there put this hand back and then bring the ball and roll it back this way but in a plank the whole time so you're sort of changing your your weight distribution um but like i say even just medicine ball slams you can just get hold of these above your head and slam them as hard as you can. Obviously, just be aware of the... type of medicine ball you're using. Um, some of them say do not slam. And just be aware of the flooring as well. Um, because whether the medicine ball can slam or not, certain, um, certain floors, you know, be it wooden floor, tile floor, whatever, aren't going to you know, um, be in a good place. I've gotten a medicine ball slam, slammed off it over and over again. So, yeah, especially if you're in the house as well, that's something to think about as well. Um, I've seen exercises where people throw these against the wall and they kind of bounce back a little bit or you've got to stoop down to pick it up. Again, like, you're probably not going to get away with that at home. You've got a medicine ball that's nine kilograms and chuck it at the wall in the house. You might be straight through into next door's living room as well. So, again, not... I guess not not really. Um, I don't know whether that's health and safety or not, but it's definitely something to be conscious of. Yeah, just thinking of the floor, think of the ball. Again, think of the space around you. Um, again, some of these medicine balls, some of them will hit the floor and sort of stick and take the shape of the floor a little bit and flatten out. Some of them will just bounce straight back up like any ball that you would expect. So again, just familiarize yourself with, with what you're using. Like I say, some of them you will bounce and it won't come back up. Some of them you'll bounce and they will. So just be aware, like, are you expecting it to come back up? Because again, I've seen people slam it, expecting it to hit the floor and stay down and it's bounced back up and hit you in the face or the chest, you know, or whatever. You just get like a hand out in front and you hurt your wrist. Um, so again, some will bounce, some won't. Some will... Some are more inclined to just roll off and do their own thing if you take your eyes off of them. You know, these ones here look more like they would sort of change shape. These ones at the top I've used before, and I know full well that they don't. Um, and then these ones here that we can just sort of see the top half of here. That's a medicine ball with handles built on. So it's the same as these, but there's like a handle built into each side so you can get hold of them. And again, you can do your twists, front raises, um, bicep curls even. There's all sorts you can do with them. Um, depending on what muscle you're trying to work. Um, medicine ball slams are probably, I always thought of them as a cardio exercise as much as anything because 
um, and like me or my clients, um, most people that I speak to would find that when you're doing medicine ball slams, it's the breathlessness that gets you and really slows you down before like your quads screaming at you or your hamstrings get tired or anything like that. So it's a very cardio based sort of um, exercise. I met some more slam, but that's not the only thing that we can do with them. Um, I used to put these down in a row. Actually, I used to put them in like a row. So you'd have like nine, seven, five, and three. And I used to get the client to squat above it, pick it up, throw it at me. And then I would catch it and put it down. They would move back, get the next one, throw it at me. Next one, throw it at me. Next one, throw it at me. And when I've got all of them and I've put them down where I am, you just run around and swap. Yeah. And then I'd say, right, again, throw these throw, throw these four back at me. Um, that was just sort of one that I sort of came up with myself. I don't even know what you'd call that as an exercise, but it worked. It didn't half work. But yeah, medicine ball is really, really good at raising that heart rate. And same as a trampoline, actually, um, which we'll get on to in a, in a little bit. But medicine balls, like I say, being aware of the bounce, if they will, if they won't, um, or if you're expecting them to or not, rolling away. You know, if you like do your 10, you put them down, you're going to sit and have a minute, check your phone. You know, it might roll off into somebody else's um, sort of space where somebody else is trying to exercise. So we've got to be careful of that. Um, and again, with wear and tear with these, um, quite often over time they start to get damaged um makes sense but as they get damaged some of them start to like crack or split so whatever's in the medicine ball eventually may start to make its way out the medicine ball um remember there was a gym at one point that i used to work in and, and the medicine balls were a little bit worse for wear and i saw one lady go to do a medicine ball slam. But she, she looked up at the same time and a load of sand fell out the bottom of this medicine ball, like into her eyes, into her mouth. And like, she, she, she put it down and now she was having a bit of a giggle about it. But like, if that, if that had been like a 20 kilogram medicine ball or something, it's above your head, you don't want to be struggling with your eyesight, you know? Um, you want to be fully in control of that 20 kilograms that's above your head. Um, so yeah, again, just before you start using them, check them for cracks, check them for um, like splits, wear and tear. Um, and yeah, like I say, just be be sort of conscious of what, what it is that you've got. Does it bounce? Does it not? Has it got handles on? Um, can they be bounced? Because some of them just, just outright can't. Um, so yeah, just be aware um, and check. Just because if you've one medicine ball doesn't mean that you've used them all, you know? Dumbbell's a dumbbell. If you've used a 10, 10 kilogram dumbbell before, you're going to go to other gyms and a 10 kilogram dumbbell is going to be pretty standard for you, you know? But yeah, certain bits of kit, um, medicine balls, stuff like that. Just, just yeah, just be, be aware before you start really going for it. Um, okay, trampolines then. So on to trampolines. So trampolines, again, a lot of exercises you can do on ground, you can do on a trampoline and a trampoline makes it harder. You know, think burpees, squats. Um, you can even do press-ups, say, for example, if you had your hands on the floor but your feet on the trampoline, or vice versa, um, makes it makes it harder as well. Um, so, yeah, um, again, not really one specific way to use a trampoline. There's not only one exercise we can do on them. You might decide that, you again, you might want to make it more cardio-based. You might do some high-knee sprints. You might do some tuck jumps. Um you might do like some pike jumps where you come up and like get your legs out front, like straight in front of you and try and touch your toes, that sort of thing. Um, again, depends what type of trampoline you've got. Some of them have got like a little, um, almost a little guardrail on the front, so it's got like a little handle where you can get a hold of the top of the handle and then yeah, you're a lot more secure. Um, this trampoline and these sorts of trampolines, obviously, as always, um, I guess it's the same as any trampoline, really. Um, and if you're going to be airborne at any point, you are naturally out of control of the situation. Um, it's really hard to like write yourself when you're airborne. Um, so yeah, you want to be obviously fairly confident in what you're doing. Um, but yeah, um, certainly don't worry about going. It's not about height, especially on these sort of trampolines. You're not trying to jump as high as you can. Um, and everything that you do, you want to be in control. Um, 
as always with the trampoline, we've got to be at, like aware of the risks of falling off the side. Um, possibly even more so with these, with them being a bit smaller and the fact that we're going to be doing exercises on them. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, obviously the, the, the classes and the exercise are designed to reduce that risk. But like we talked about last week, you can never fully reduce the risk. You know, it's like, how do you put somebody on a motorbike without the risk of them falling off or coming off it? It's like, you can't really, it's, it's a car, you know, <laughs> you're surrounded by, yeah, you're in the vehicle instead of on the vehicle. I was like, yeah, this is it's a car, it's a different vehicle. You get on a bike, no matter what you do, there is that risk. Um, it can never be fully removed. Um, so yeah, trampolines are not necessarily for everybody. Again, thinking about what we said when we looked at um the skipping rope. Um, I've met people my age and younger that get on a trampoline and start bouncing, and it's like, oof, no, my lower back doesn't like that for whatever reason. Again, um, so yeah, not not necessarily for everybody or suitable for everybody. Um, if you were just going to use one for the first time, again, maybe just ask for a little bit of supervision or a little bit of help. Um, you know, I didn't, I don't think I ever saw anybody go up to the trampoline that we had at, like in the gym and get it out by themselves and start doing stuff on it. But if we did a boot camp or a circuit, I'd be like, ah, let's get the trampoline thrown in there. You know, um, obviously while we're on the while we're on the top of the circuit training circuit training and fitness classes in general is a really good opportunity for um people to get confident and get used to exercise and different bits of equipment um you know the amount of people that used to come to me that i would that had never i'd never seen go get the sledgehammer out and start hitting the tire but they did it once in boot camp and then the next time they were in the gym they took themselves over, got the tire out, got the sledgehammer out and felt more comfortable doing it. So circuit training is a really good chance to, um, especially if there's an instructor there, um, or if you are the instructor, just be aware that that's a really good chance to help people grow in confidence with new exercises that they might then go and do by themselves. Um, but yeah, trampolines in general, not necessarily for everybody. And um, of course, as with all trampolines, you've got to be aware of something happening with the springs or the actual sort of um, trampoline fabric itself. They can tear, they can, they can sort of um, perish over time. And again, maybe you've even sort of picked it up and had to put the legs in yourself. You want to make sure that those legs are in nice and safe, nice and secure. You're not going to jump on it and one side's going to topple and you're going to bounce off at the funny angle and, and, and go, God knows where. Um so yeah, trampolines, um, very cardio sort of based again, depending on what we're doing, but, but don't necessarily have to be, there's a lot we can do with the trampoline. Um, and again, ways to make that harder or easier is going to depend based on, um, the exercise that you're trying to do. So, um, I was going to mention this at the end anyway, but I might as well just point it out now. If you're, um, you know, while you're doing your circuit cards, if you think of an exercise, like I say, you might be looking at the trampoline and you might be thinking, right, I want to do um, one of my circuit exercises is going to be um, tuck jumps on the trampoline. You know, if you've decided that, but you, you know, you're not sure how can I make it harder? How can I make it easier? Um, what muscles am I using through this exercise? Again, drop me an email and let me know and I'll get that information over to you just so you can... Um, get it on those circuit cards. We, we'd be here all week if we were going to sit and go through every single exercise you can do with every single bit of kit and what muscles they use, how to make it easier and harder. So yeah, if you think of something and you're not sure on any of those bits or, or how you would put it on your circuit card, just let me know, you know. It might even be like a little description. You might be pretty confident in the rest. But in terms of writing out the exercise and what to do in a way that somebody could come along and follow, you might not be sure with as well. So yeah, please um please just give us a shout if you do um do want a hand with with any anything to do with those circuit cards. Um but yeah tram trampolines is one of them where it's um you definitely want to be checking that the legs are on, thinking about um just making same as the resistance bands and stuff and, and medicine balls, I guess really just give it a once over, check everything before you start using it. Um and that's assuming that it is going to be sort of suitable and, and right for you. Um, okay, then, spin it on, spin it on. We have got a, um, a barbell. 
So like I mentioned earlier on, the, the barbell is the big, long bar, um, and you more often than not put the weights on yourself. So you get these big weight plates or these weight discs, slide them on the bar through the hole in the middle of the weight. And then there's normally, can't see it very well because the light in, but there's normally like a little clip that you can slide up to the weight to hold it in place. So the weights don't move around and ultimately fall off. Um, because that's, that's no good. If you've got a barbell on your back and you've got 20 kilograms that side and 20 kilograms that side, you don't want to dip and have this plate fall off because the other one's just going to jam you straight back the other way. So, um, yeah, with the barbell, I always try and make sure that the clips are on, especially if the bar is going to be above you. If you lay down and bench pressing, if you overhead press or whatever, that's one thing. If you're doing, if you're doing a, like a row or a deadlift, Maybe not, not, not quite as important that they're um, clipped on. But, I mean, again, depending on where you're training, weight could very easily come off and roll into somebody else's vicinity as well. So, yeah, I would say that weight's coming off your bar at any time when you're not expecting it. It's never, it's never ideal. It's never going to be fully safe. So, again, just clip them on. Make sure that those weights aren't going anywhere. Um. Again, I would always check check your space before you start doing whatever it is that you're doing. Um, you know, these barbells, due to their nature, can get quite heavy. If you uh, right, okay, so when, with a bar with a barbell, you can get quite a lot of weight on them. So this bar itself normally weighs about 20 kilograms. Yeah. Now, obviously. You can put little weights on the side as well, a little two and a half kilograms or whatever it is. But um, you'll normally see bigger weights on the uh, on the barbells. Um, so if you can imagine this, you imagine this size plate, like this plate here might be 20 kilograms. If you imagine this size plate on one of these, you know, where you've screwed them on yourself, you realize how impractical that would be. Yeah, it's so hard to get really heavy dumbbells because the bigger the plate gets, the more it starts to interfere with your, 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 uh, the maneuverability, you know? How on earth are you going to get your hand on this tiny little bit of bar to hold it when there's one of these giant discs either side? It would just be so impractical. And you'd go into a bicep curl and the plate would hit you in the chest and you'd only be there. Yeah, so sometimes you might want the little smaller, more compact dumbbells. And other times you might want those bigger weights, either to get more weight on the bar to do a, like a heavy lift, like a squat or a deadlift or whatever. Um, or sometimes, um, and again, it's a little bit outside the box, this one, but sometimes the bigger plates can actually um, affect, like change the range that you're working through. So if this, if these two plates were tiny and the size of like a five plate, think about how much lower that bar would be to the floor because the weight would be smaller. So the bar would be lower. He would need to bend down lower. And when he's lifting, it would be coming further. Um, so yeah, um, not necessarily something that you're going to need to worry about, but it's just always um, like when it comes to barbell versus dumbbell, I tend to go, dumbbells unless it needs to be heavy in which case i tend to go for a barbell but yeah barbells we want to make sure that they, you know the weights aren't sliding off the side the clips are on and uh, when we put it down and again we put it down we're not olympic lifters you know we're not breaking world records when we're done we don't have to just chuck it again there's other people around um it used to be one of my well, it used to be one of my pet peeves that didn't really did yeah uh, you know you've done a lift and you've lifted this bar 10 times above your head but now you're done you're just so exhausted that you can't possibly like just put it down. You have to chuck it. Um, anyway, um, yeah, just make sure it doesn't roll off again. Um, it's not unheard of for a barbell with quite a lot of weight either side to roll into somebody's leg and just and just break it because there's that much mass behind it. Especially if it hits you on the side, it can go through your tib and your fib. Um, absolutely no bother. Um, that's probably, that's probably it when it comes to barbells, to be honest, other than putting them away when we're done or not using them. Like I say, you put them on the floor, they, they want to roll about a little bit anyway because of their shape. But again, they're easy to trip over um, or, or, or fall onto. So a lot of places will have um, 
somewhere to store uh, barbells. It'll either just be a corner where you can pick it up, stand it on its end and lean it in, or it might actually be, um, you can get like, it's got like slots. Um, it's like a little unit but with holes in, so you can just put your barbell in, slot in nice and snug, and it's not going to wobble about too much side to side, and it's not going to fall. Um, so yeah, barbells, um, exercises, you know, you can do a lot of stuff that you could do with dumbbells. You know, with a dumbbell, you can you can have a weight in each hand and do curls. With a barbell, you could just get hold of the bar and do curls. Yeah. And um, the reason why I do them with dumbbells and do a lot of stuff with dumbbells where I can is if I'm doing a barbell, if I've got hold of one of these and I'm doing this, because I'm left-handed, my left side might end up doing more of the work. Whereas if I've got two separate weights, my left hand can work as hard as it wants, but it's not helping the right out. The right needs to work by itself. Yeah, right needs to work independently as well. So that's why I do a lot of my um, training with with dumbbells over barbells, um, just 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 for just for balance. Um, but yeah, that's in, in terms of safety. That's 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 probably the big things when it comes to a barbell. Um, and again, as always, check stuff before you use it. Um, I've seen barbells where this bit's fallen off before like the actual end bit that you slide the weight onto i've used barbells where where like i say they've gone um they've come off as well so just be careful there um okay then so next one we've got the exercise mat so the exercise mat like i mentioned earlier on it's going to be just a little bit of extra cushioning between you and the floor whether you're on your knees hands um laid on your back whatever it is, um, just gives you that extra little bit of cushioning, might make certain exercises easier, depending on the floor, an exercise mat might give you a little bit more grip. If you were on like a wooden floor in like a studio, and um, if you were like, it was a studio class, and you were going to do certain exercises, it might be quite slippy on the wood, whereas the mat's going to give you a little bit more um, control, and usually have an underside that is designed to make them stick not it's not sticky but it just gives it a little bit of grip so your mat's not sliding because that would be a problem in itself um so i guess the with with an exercise mat you know you might be doing planks mountain climbers and um, hot hands where you're in a plank but touching your shoulders um you know you might be doing a side plank you might be it might be a reverse plank you might be on laid on your back doing sit-ups leg raises scissor kicks um no sorry flutter kicks or or like scissor kicks moving your legs one over the other. Um, it could be leg raises, working your lower abs. Um, trying to think of some of the other stuff I've used mats for. I mean, I used to use exercise mats um, quite a lot. Just again, as like cushioning. If I was doing step ups with a, with a weight on my back, if I'm stepping up onto a bench, I'm up with the weight. When I come back down, I used to have a mat underneath my feet. Just take a little bit of that impact, a little bit of that cushion, my, my leg's still working hard on the way up. As I come down, I don't want that impact going up through my other leg. So exercise mat can really help there. Um, again, a lot of stuff. If you've ever done like Russian twists, so you sit on your bum, lean back, pick your feet up if you can, and then do twists side to side and touch the floor. That is That can be so painful to do without an exercise mat. Um, Because obviously you're right on sort of like them bones at the, at the bottom of your spine. You know your um your coccyx and your and your, the old sacrum, your old tailbone. So um yeah, exercise mat can make a big difference. And then again, obviously, just put them away after you, after after you're done, um and be aware of them while you're using them. They are a trip hazard. You know, again, for whatever reason, you might be doing um you might be doing lunges. You know, you might be doing lunges with your knee on your back, uh, with your knee on your back. You're doing well with the bar on your back. You drop your knee down to the floor. You've got the mat down, maybe just to just to take some of that. It's not impact, but it's just somewhere to rest your knee. Um, as you're stepping up to the mat to do that with the weight on your back, you know you don't want to like get your toe caught under the lip of the mat, the mat, or you know um, go over it or, or trip on it as well. So make sure that you can't trip on it and just be careful. Um, and then of course put it away when you're done with it, so other people can't trip on it either. You know, somebody goes to do shuttle runs while you've been um, and you've just left your mat there, they're, they're much more likely to, to go over it and, and, and hurt themselves, cause themselves a little bit of damage. 
Um, so yeah, with an exercise mat, again, lots of exercises we can do. There's no right and wrong. Um, there's no, you will be working these muscles. You won't be working these muscles. Like I say, it depends on, uh, on what it is that you're doing. Um, an exercise mat, not to say that an exercise mat isn't suitable for everybody. You know, there's not one person that's capable of lying on an exercise mat and one person that's not in that sense. But in terms of your exercise selection, in terms of making it easier, in terms of making it harder as well, if you've got someone that's a little bit older or has got injuries or, or disabilities, they might have a bit of a harder time getting up and down on and off, like off the floor. Yeah. So if you, you might have an exercise where, if you were going to be like doing bicycle crunches, so you lay it on your back, hands on your temples, you're going to come across, elbow to knee, lay down, elbow to knee, and again on the other side, elbow to knee. If your plan is to do those laid down, and you've got someone who's struggling to get down onto the mat, just get them to stand up and do the same. Either bring this, this elbow to this knee, or bring this elbow to this knee, and do side to side. Yeah, so you can modify that exercise that way, um, just by, you know, it's still some movement, but you don't necessarily need to get yourself down and onto the floor, you know. Um, obviously, the nature of a lot of clients that I've worked with over the years, being um, rehabbing injuries or whatever it is, is, something I've come across quite often, you know. Well, yes, we want to we want to work your core muscles, but you can't get down under the exercise mat to do sit up planks, whatever. You need to think of other stuff. Um, so yeah some of the exercises that you might do on an exercise mat might not be for everybody. Um, okay, cool. So next two then, next two, we have got a battle rope and a kettlebell. So if you've never seen these before, maybe you've heard of them before, maybe you haven't, um, this might fill in the blanks a little bit, especially from what I said earlier on. Obviously, a battle rope is just big, heavy rope that is normally tied around something so you've got both ends at the same time and you can do looks like that she's doing like snakes where she'll be picking up one side slamming it down doing the same on the other side get them get them both moving um like i say that so battle ropes is going to be quite cardio based but it's going to work the shoulders a lot as well so shoulders and a little bit of your traps just from that that raising movement yeah you'd be surprised how heavy some of these ropes are Maybe it's not for the first 10 seconds, but beyond that, yeah, they really can get the way, especially if these muscles start to tire out. Um, you can do slams, which is very much the same muscles, but you're using your legs a little bit more because your legs are getting involved a bit more. Um, I've seen people do, again, press up, come up, get the rope, slam it, other side, slam it, back down and do another press up. You know, it depends how far you want to go with it, but even just... Um, like I say, snakes, slams, um, or again, you can do Russian twists. I used to like doing them with the ropes. So you get hold of the ropes in your hand, both both ends in your hands, sit on your bum, lean back, twists side to side. You can even try and slam the rope either side as you're twisting as well, which gets those obliques working that much harder as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, not quite as versatile as some of the other kit that we've looked at. I mean, again, I've... I've tied weight plates to the end of a bottle rope and pulled it like the length of the gym, like that sort of thing. Um, it's not the most traditional sort of sense, uh, traditional use of a bottle rope, but again, you can do some different bits, but it's not like, say, a dumbbell where you could potentially work out every every muscle in the body, really. A lot of the bottle rope stuff that you do is going to be cardio-based, um, and you just maybe stimulate some of the muscle along the way. Um, so bottle ropes... Again, you want to make sure that they are tied around something so they're not flailing all over the place. Um, again, check your space because this is probably the one that needs the most space out of everything that we're going to look at. Obviously, you need to have it tied around something. You need to have space for you to do whatever you're doing and you need the space in between to be clear as well. You know, you don't want somebody stepping over your rope while you're in mid slams or whatever. And they probably wouldn't want to step over your rope while you're mid slams either. Um, so as always, check in your space, make sure that you've got the right space for what it is that you're going to try and do. Um, what are other people look to around you? Um, I think 
health and safety wise, that's probably the two big ones. I mean, there will be a little bit of, um, you know, the first time you use them because you whip them, there's like a little bit of a kink. It might try and pull you forward a little bit. So just be aware of that. Um, in terms of the handles, I guess you could just make sure that the handles are all right before you start using them. Nothing's going to slip. Nothing's going to, you know, um, irritate your, your, your palm or anything like that either as well. Obviously, because these get quite a lot of wear and tear. I've seen ones that have sort of got like a bit of a a botch roll, a, a bit of a botch job um, on the on the handles. Yeah, so the handles might have just been taped up or something, and over time it comes off. If it's plastic, you know, it can sort of like dig into your hand or or, or whatever it is. So again, just check it all over. And but yeah, the big ones with the battle rope, I would say, like I say, check your space and um, for yourself and for other people around you as well. Um, I've had clients come in the gym and on their program is um, battle ropes. We're going to do this later on. I go to do it and there's just not enough space based on, you know, it might just be this person can only train at five o'clock tea time when the gym's too busy. You know, there was actually areas of the day where I was like, right, okay, I'm not even going to plan any battle ropes for that session because the gym's usually too busy. I'll just plan something else. Um, so yeah, you need, you need the space to use them. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the big one, to be honest. Um, same with same with everything that we've looked at, we need to consider our space. But yeah, with battle ropes, that is, um, that's probably the big one. Um, okay, then, so moving on to kettlebells. So kettlebell, um, oh, I guess, yeah, I can kind of see the kettle shape about it. It's just missing the spout, really, isn't it? It's like one of the old school kettles. Um Okay, so this 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 gentleman here is demonstrating a kettlebell swing. So you're thinking, um, nice flat back. Yeah, bend in the knees. Keep your chin up, and your hips come back over as you bend your knees. Yeah. From there, you drive your hips forward and straighten your body out like he's doing, and you use that momentum to get the kettlebell up to shoulder height. So you're not swinging it with your arms. You're using that like a little bit of a squat, coming back forward, driving your hips forward and getting that height as well. So this is all, this is like four steps of the same exercise, really. Um, so it's, it's a kettlebell swing. Um, again, we can make it easier, harder by either, um, you know, making the kettlebell lighter, heavier. Um, kettlebells, in, in fact, well, I'll chuck in the medicine balls as well while I'm on there. Um, kettlebells and medicine balls don't always go up in the... Um, most convenient um, sort of weight. So like I said earlier, with a dumbbell tree, you might get a pair of one kilograms, a pair of two kilograms, a pair of three. With a kettlebell, you don't get all of them. You know, with a kettlebell, you might have two kilograms, four kilograms, then your next one might be eight. Your next one from that might be 16. Your next one above that might be 32. Um, so... I guess health and safety wise, you want to make sure that you're on a manageable weight, you know, just because one's getting a little bit easy. Yeah. You might think, look, I'm ready for, I'm ready to go a little bit heavier with this, but you know, the next weight up might be drastically too heavy, you know? So again, just be aware of that just because you've got used to one weight doesn't necessarily mean you're ready for the next weight up. Like it might with, you know, dumbbells. So I've done the nine kilograms. I'll try the tens now, you know? Um, so yeah, kettlebell, um, I get health and safety. You always want to be thinking about your technique, you know, um, it's not necessarily the kettlebell itself. It's more how you use it. You can use a kettlebell really well, really good fat burner, really good for toning and stimulating muscle growth. But at the same time, if you pick it up and you do this with an arch back, you're much more likely to, um, slip a disc or, uh, or to put your back out. Yeah. So there's, um, it's, it's more technique. And I guess that's the thing with some of these bits of kit, really. Um, if you get onto a machine in the gym with two handles and you can push it and that's all it does, there's only so far wrong you can get that, you know? You're getting the guidance from the machine. But in this case, um, with a kettlebell and with free weights, dumbbells, barbells, anything like that, it comes down to your technique as well and puts that responsibility on you quite a lot. Um, there's no machine there to keep you right. So if your form's bad, you're much more likely to hurt yourself. So big, good technique is a big one when it comes to um, health and safety in terms of, um, especially kettlebells. 
Um, the thing itself, you might find um, the handles can perish a little bit. You might find that the, the material on the handle, you know, again, a little bit wear and tear. It might crack. It might hurt your hand. It might be enough for the handle to either come loose or for the kettlebell to fly across the room. Um, again, I've seen that happen. Um, so, again, good once over before you start using it. Is it okay? Does it look like it's going to come to bits as soon as I start using it as well? It's one to think about. Um all right guys, okay, so um all right we've got all right, I'm gonna come back to this slide in a second. So I'm gonna give you guys just two minutes. I want you to think about if is there any um is there anything that we've missed so far um in terms of how do you use it? Um have you thought have you have you thought of any um health and safety considerations that we've missed so far? And um, for any of the bits of kit, is there anything that you've seen that you'd like to know more about? Um, but yeah, um, have a little think, guys. I'll give you a couple of minutes. And then, by all means, um, pop it in the chat if you do think of anything. Do you have any questions on any of the bits of kit that we've looked at so far? Um, but yeah, did we miss anything first time through? I'll give you a couple of minutes, and I will be right back. Okay, guys, did we find anything? Did we find anything? Or did we get the lot? Did we get it all? Okay, guys, cool. Um, so, yeah, that's a look through a lot of different kits that you might see in a um, fitness environment, especially in a circuit. Like I say, you could do a circuit where, you know, even let's just go off, off the top of our head, so... If we were going to plan an exercise, a circuit with one exercise with each of these bits of kit, let's have a look. So resistance band, we could do, um, we could do lap pull downs like they're doing. Yeah, lateral pull downs. For the step, let's do um, some some high knee step ups. Yeah, so one foot on the step, push up with that leg, drive your other knee through and as high as you can come back down, foot on the floor, step off the step, put the other foot up on the step, and reverse and do the same with the other knee. So you're like step on, high knee, off, off, foot on, high knee on the other leg. Yeah? So that's two exercises we could do. Three, dumbbells, nice and simple. Let's just throw in some side raise. Yeah? So we've got deltoids working. Um, that's, that's the primary muscle that's going to be working, those deltoids, yeah, because we're isolating them with that side raise. So we've gone into a side raise, straight into some skipping. So we've done a weight, like some weights into a bit of cardio. Then we might say medicine ball, right? Medicine ball slams. We're gonna get those, that core turning on a little bit as we're sort of flexing a slam. Um, big cardio exercise, got your legs working a little bit, especially with, um, like I say, some of them, they hit the floor and they just stay. So you have to squat down to pick it up again as well. So it's not just a slam, it's a squat after every single one as well. So let's have some of them in there. Yeah, some squat slams. Um, trampoline, we might just do some tuck jumps. Yeah, back to cardio. Um, we might go into a barbell, which might be, could be a deadlift, like it looks like that person's doing there. So get the bar in close to your shins. Um, obviously, both hands on the bar. Back's nice and flat, bums down low like we're squatting. And then from there, stand yourself up. Yeah, almost rolling the bar up your shins as you do it. So we could do a deadlift. You know, it might be pop it on the back of your neck. Let's do some squats. 
yeah a mask it might be um like i say that's come into a either a plank or some um some mountain climbers so we're in a plank position and we raise one foot bring the knee across to the opposite elbow and then swap and do the same on the opposite side yeah on and off nice and controlled so we've got um what have we got so we've got our lat pull downs we've got our um high knee step ups side raises skipping on the spot medicine ball slams um trampoline i uh, tuck jumps then we moved into like a squat then say we're going to do some um I don't know what we just said for the laid down one, but let's just say we're going to lay on our back and do some flutter kicks. So both feet up off the floor, just doing little kicks and get those lower abs turned on. Yeah. Into some battle rope slams or snakes, into some kettlebell swings. Yeah, so really using those glutes, um, really using those bum muscles and those lower back muscles to drive forward, keep everything straight as well, but drive forward and get that momentum to get that kettlebell up to about head height so that, that that could that's just an example circuit there um that we sort of put together and that that potentially uses all of these bits of kit you know and i've i've taught circuits i've i've been to circuits i've done circuits where you know it's not unheard of that you'll use what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten different pieces of equipment and that might just be 10 exercises you know, so again, circuit training can be really good at just getting you used to these different bits of kit that you might not go into the gym and just choose for yourself normally, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to go do this. If you've never done it before, why would you, you know? Um, again, it could be, could be um, just a, a good chance to start getting, building that confidence a little bit really. Um, so... Yeah, hopefully by now we're, we're starting to feel a little bit more sort of familiar uh, with, with some of these bits of kit. Again, maybe next time you're at the gym or next time you're in that fitness environment, if you spy any of them, give them a go. Maybe it's even if you see somebody else doing something with them, like, oh, okay, um, you know, what what was that exercise? Um, if you mind me asking, you know, nine, nine, out, nine out of 10 people in the gym will be just happy to answer your questions and help you out, really. Um I know it's not always just as easy as asking people for help, especially in the gym environment, especially when we're new to the gym. I get that as well as anybody. But, um, yeah, over time, as that confidence grows, you know, uh, maybe you'll feel able to expand into some of these uh, and use some of these different bits of kit. And that's not everything, guys. Like I say, there's TRX ropes, there's tyres, there's sledgehammers, you know, there's prowlers, um, like like a sled that you put a lot of weight on and you either push it or you pull it. Um so there's those as well. Um, so, so much that you could do with these different bits of kit. A lot of them have several uses, like I say, with a dumbbell. You can do lots of different exercises for lots of different body parts. There's not really um, a right and a wrong. So have a little bit of a think, guys. Think about, you know, maybe fill in some of the blanks first. Okay, I've got battle ropes in there. I've got kettlebells in there. What am I going to do with my dumbbells? Well, what are your battle ropes working? If your battle ropes are going to be doing a lot of shoulder work, a lot of cardio work, you might get the dumbbells and think, oh, well, I haven't really put any leg exercises in yet. Let's do some squats with the dumbbells in our hand or some lunges or, or something. So you can always look at your circuit, see what you maybe want a bit more of, a bit less of, and that might help you pick what exercises that you put in there as well. I always used to try and get a bit of a mix between cardio and weights and equipment and, and body weight uh, and just try and mix it up as much as possible keep it fresh uh, okay then guys cool so homework for this week um is just as follows really uh, become familiar with the following workbooks which we're going to look at now um, and then think about your own circuit training session so equipment that you plan to use and the exercises that you plan to use as well. So start thinking about those exercises. What kit does it use? Um, and that can start to give you a little bit of an outline for your um, circuit cards. Um, okay, guys, cool. So we'll come back to this slide um, at the end of the session, but there's a quick little look now um, anyway. So I'm just going to close that down for now. I'm going to come back to... Uh, boom, boom. 
is what books, and we'll have a look at these two. Mm, two seconds. Share screen. Yeah, right. Oops. Okay, guys, so you should be able to say that okay. Right. Um, okie dokie. So we've got um, use using tools and equipment for a practical activity. Um, so this workbook, like I say, there's no actual work to specifically do this week, um, but it is a good chance to just get used to the workbook, have a little bit of a look through. Um, so first activity in small groups normally which is the way it used to be done because we're doing it online because we're doing it from home you will be obviously like a little one-man team so in groups of one uh, you're going to plan a circuit training session using a range of equipment supplied by your tutor which hypothetical equipment because we're online so equipment is going to include mats resistance bands kettlebells medicine balls dumbbells skips ladders cones pretty much everything we've just looked at this morning um State the purpose of the tools and equipment suitable for the agreed activity. So using the box below, identify at least two pieces of equipment required for a circuit training class. So it could be skipping ropes, cones. Describe how each piece of equipment will be used. So what will be done with them and why it's suitable for the class, why you've picked them. Yeah. How they'll be used, why it's suitable, how it'll be used, why it's suitable. Yeah, so for three bits of equipment that you're planning on using. Um, so top tip that we've got there in the book for your description. So when you're writing out a little description for the exercise, think about the exercises that will be carried out with the equipment. All con consider the cardio um, and muscular benefits for why it will be used as well. Yeah, so when you're filling in this bit, um, Think about the exercises that will be done and 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 why. Yeah, is it cardio? Is it muscular benefit? Um, okay, so 1.2, um, state and follow the safety precautions associated with the tools and equipment. Um, think of a circuit training class like we've been doing. Use the box below to identify two different safety precautions with at least three pieces of equipment. So you're picking three of these and you're naming two safety precautions for both. Yeah. So for um, resistance bands, it might be, um, they might, they might snap um, and oh, make sure that they're not about to snap or make sure that um, nobody, like they're not laid out. Or put, put them away when you're done with them sort of thing. Um, so that is for three of these pieces of equipment, not all of them. Yeah. Three. Um, next one, uh, use appropriate tools and equipment to produce an agreed artifact or complete an agreed task. So using the box below, plan your training session, including up to 10 workout stations. Yeah. So at least two of the stations... We need to have some equipment in there. So the other four can be bodyweight exercises, star jumps, squats, whatever. But two of them need to have some equipment. And we need at least six exercises. You can go up to 10 if you want to, but we need at least six. Yeah, so at least six cards is what we're going to be doing in the end. So fill them in. Um, yeah, cool. So you can put them in there. Um, and then um, we can come back to this in um, later weeks as well when we have a bit more time to look at actually maintaining each of these and looking after them and, and that sort of thing. Um, okay, cool. So leave that for now. And let's jump across to the other workbook as well, which was use of materials in a practical activity. So in this unit, you'll be able to select appropriate materials or products from a vocationally related activity. 
and be able to evaluate the result of the activity. So your own circuit and using the cards really. So like we've said, in this unit, we're going to plan and design, um, that should be six detail, uh, detailed circuit training cards. Each card is going to include the name of the exercise, the equipment used, a little picture for the exercise. Now that can be hand-drawn, taken from the internet or cut out of a magazine if you want to. Um, and a detailed description of how to carry out each exercise, including body alignment and position. Yeah. So um, you must include detailed step-by-step -step instructions so that even your granny's granny could pick up the card and complete the exercise safely. Yeah. So good detailed description of what to do if, you know, um, someone who's never lifted a weight before or done this exercise in their life could come along and get a good idea of what they should be doing and the benefits that, you know, they'll be getting from it. Um, okay, and then we have that example as well that we looked at on the slide, I think, last week as well. Um, and that's, like I say, just an example. So this is their little description. So for a standing military press, we can see we're working the deltoids and the triceps. We're using dumbbells. Here's a little picture. Um, so the description. Standing with your feet shoulder shoulder width apart, take a dumbbell in each hand, raise the dumbbells to head height with the elbows out and about 90 degrees. This is your starting position. The lifter then raises the dumbbells overhead by pressing the palms of the hand against the underside of the dumbbells and then lowering to the starting position again. Yeah, that's a standing military press. So that's that's a good little description, nice and easy to follow. Um, yeah, uh, safety tips at the bottom. Ensure to choose a weight you are comfortable with in order to maintain correct form and minimize risk of injury, especially to the back. So again, in terms of, um, that's a safety tip. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of um, picking your right weight, you want to make sure that, yeah, you get to the end of the circuit with good form, uh, the end of the round with good form. Um, again, like I think I mentioned before, I've, I've done this myself. If you go in and you're thinking, right, okay, stand in military press. Um, or when I come in by the, in the gym by myself, I do these, I'll do, I do sets of 10 and I do, um, I do 20 kilograms. So I'm going to go and get them 20 kilograms for this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can do 20 kilograms for, for 10, like you're used to doing. But in a circuit, it's going to be different. You might be working for 45, 60 seconds. You might have time to do 30, 40 reps in that time. You don't want the 20s, you know? So, yeah, be aware how long you're going to be working for as well. You know, if your instructor's told you, look, we're going to be doing 30 seconds work, 30 seconds rest or whatever it is. Um, bear that in mind when you're picking your weights. You don't want to find yourself leaning back, putting strain on your back because um, you're going to actually potentially, um, again, cause yourself more harm than, than good. So again, that's always, um, safe, safety is always important when it comes to, um, especially free weights, but exercise in general. Um, okay, then. so that's our little example. Um, and then afterwards, once you've talked to me and we've been through your circuit cards, you've talked to us all about them, that'll only be by a one-to-one one -one Zoom call as well. Yeah, so don't worry about that. That'll be a one-to-one -one Zoom. Um, and then, yeah, we can go through, right, okay, what went well with the circuit? Um, and then what do you think you could improve or what do we think you could improve um, and go from there? So that's that's quite a quite a short workbook, obviously. Um, so we will spend a little bit more time looking at the other one. But, yeah, it's just a chance for you to start um, – that's the same one I've just loaded again. Oh, there it is. Um, just start getting familiar with these workbooks. Um, and just have a little bit of a look through. And I guess really now's the time that we can start planning your circuit as well. You know, what exercises um, are you going to go for? What, um, what order are you going to put them in? How many exercises are you going to have? Um, what's the focus of the class going to be? Maybe do you want to think about like are all your exercises going to be aimed at legs? Abs. It might be a full body workout. You know, you might want to get a good mix of everything in there. That's what I used to try and do with my circuits. I would try and make a point of um, 
you know, right, right. I'll sit and I'll go, right, okay, I've got I've got three lower body exercises in there. I've got three upper body exercises, there's three for core or abs, and there's three that are quite cardio sort of based. Granted, that, that that's 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 12 stations, but that's just there uh, for argument's sake. So in that case, you know, you've got three exercises of each, three upper, three lower, three for your core. Uh, or abs and three for um, like cardio and heart rate as much as anything. So again, that that's entirely up to you. Um, you might want to stick with exercises that you're more familiar with, more confident with, maybe you've done yourself before. Um, but you know, it's 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 a good it's a good chance to um, maybe have a little bit of a think as well about the sort of training that you would like to do. Uh, I've had learners, especially over the last two years. Um, have used this opportunity to create a little circuit for themselves, but one that they can use in the house. So that, yeah, when when we're going through it, we're getting a little bit of feedback. I could maybe tell you what little tweaks I might make or what I would change, for example. Um, and then they've used the circuits, you know, once the course is done, they use them circuit cards in the house to run themselves through a little circuit. It's Again, it's even easier you know, you're not thinking about, right, what exercise am I going to do next? You can just put your cards out and away you go. Um, and of course, the more you do it, the more familiar you get with it. But it is a good chance to knock yourself up a little routine as well that you might want to use. Um, especially now, I say over the last two years, you might want to, it might be just as helpful to do it now because you're going to have access to the places that have got some of this bit of kit, you know? So you might want to put together a little circuit that you can use for yourself next time you go down to the gym. Um, or maybe if you get a couple of, um, like, like a mate or two together as well, something that we couldn't do in COVID, you know, training with our friends. Nowadays, if you do these six circuit cards, you can potentially, um, like I say, take them around to the park, do your own circuit, depending on what kit you need, obviously, do your own circuit or, or get a few mates and do it together. You've got your own circuit. You don't necessarily have to go to a gym or to a fitness class. You 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 would then have something that people pay what three three to five pound a session to go and do. But this is a chance to tailor it to you and your goals and what you need as well. If you want to work on your legs, making a leg circuit. Let's get you some. Let's get your six legs exercises done, body weight or with or with kit, whatever it is that is going to help you achieve your goals as well. Yeah. So really, really good chance. Have, have a good thing. Um, and by all means, as always, let me know if you, um, if you're struggling with anything, if you know, you're on the fence, you've got like a decision to make and you're not sure which way to go with it. Um, there's something that I was always told when I was doing my PT course, um, especially at first, you know, there is no right and wrong way to order things just as long as you can kind of I guess I think the word they used was justify it but as long as you can back it up you know if I can say to you right okay we'll put this exercise first because you know then then fair play it might be right we'll put this exercise first because I want to I want him to do a load of cardio first get his heart rate up um, and potentially make the rest of these exercises harder that's fine you might also choose, right, I've put this exercise first because I want him to start the circuit easier and ease into it and it gets harder as the circuit goes on. That's totally fine as well. You know, there isn't necessarily a right and a wrong way to do it. You might want to put all your legs exercises back to back. You know, you might do um, you might do side lunges, squats, regular lunges, three exercises in a row. Yeah, it's going to blast your legs. That might be what you want. Or, you know, you might put a legs exercise, then an upper exercise, then an abs exercise, and then repeat. So, like I say, there's, there's, there is no right and wrong way to structure them, what order to put them in. Um, again, like it really, it's, 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 it's what's, um, what, what stands out to you, what appeals to you. Um, I've done a lot of circuits in me time, and I've always had my way of doing it, and I always find it interesting to see. How other people would do it, you know, how would you put things together? Why? What order have you put exercises in? Um, but yeah, let's not worry too much about order that we're doing them in. Just have a think and start trying to narrow down some of those exercises for like, yeah, what exercises are you gonna do? 
what equipment does it need? What of them are body weight exercises? And um, of course, beyond that, right, we need to make sure that we know what muscles those exercises use. Um, and then what, again, a little description for how to do the exercise. Um, and uh, of course, those safety, safety tips as well. So there's a lot to think about. Um, and of course, we can only fill in the blanks once we've narrowed it down to you know, a handful of exercises. Maybe it's even just pick 10 exercises that you can think of and then start doing the rest. And you might think, right, okay, I don't know what muscles that uses, but I do know that this is a shoulder exercise or whatever. Um, you might be able to do it that way as well. But as always, guys, if you do get stuck, please just drop me an email um, and I'm always more than happy to help out. Um, so just going to come back to the PowerPoint just to finish us up and just to go to um, visit that last slide. So as always, guys, in the little description box below the video, and um, we have a link to today's survey. Please don't forget to do that. Um, we need one for each session um, of the course. It's not even 30 seconds to fill it in. Uh, if you click the link in the description, it takes you where you need to be. You can put your information and your answers in there and just click submit. So you don't need to worry about downloading a form, uh, filling it in, saving it, sending it back to us or anything like that. So it's dead easy to do, nice and straightforward. Um, so yeah, please do. Um, don't forget to do that. So next week, we're going to start completing some of the workbooks um, and planning the design of our circuit training cards. Yeah, so how are we actually going to lay them out um, and thinking about that a little bit more, um, you know, layout, um, colours maybe even, um, fonts. Um, because um, obviously in the last two years we've been online, um, some of these cards have been done digitally for the first time ever and that's kind of opened up some different options i think especially when it comes to like presentation and and stuff like that if you're more confident doing them on the computer you could do them on something like like powerpoint or or google slides or whatever um, and just do a different one per per slide or maybe you are maybe you know a little bit old school maybe you like the uh, the arts and crafts maybe you like uh, being a little bit more hands-on doing the coloring um yourself and there's, there's nothing wrong with that if you'd rather do them physical like paper copies that's fine you could potentially laminate them eventually um and keep them um or like i say maybe you um maybe you just want to do them digitally or maybe you just want to do them on the uh like on the computer or on your laptop as well and like i say either way is totally fine it's entirely up to you personal preference um so yeah have a little bit of a think about that as well but Six exercises minimum. Yeah, we need six exercises, two of them using equipment. Um, let's start having a think, guys, and getting some ideas down. It doesn't have to be finalized, nothing set in stone just yet. Just start getting some ideas thrown around. Um, and we'll go from there. You know, like I say, if you need a hand with anything, drop me an email. If you've got any questions, if you're not sure, best way to proceed, where to even start. Um, again, let me know, drop me an email. And I'll um, I'll help out as best I can. Um, so yeah, guys. That being said, we will of course be back next Monday to do it all again. And uh, I just want to quickly have a little look and see what the topic is for next week. What are we looking at next week? Um, we are looking at um, so obviously, like we just said, we're building on different um, different exercises we could do for the um for your circuit cards but next week really we're going to be looking at some body weight exercises as well that we might fit in around um some of these ones with equipment as well we've looked at quite a lot of equipment this morning um so next week we're going to be looking at exercises you could do without any you know in the meantime if you'd like to explore some exercises that you can do without any equipment click the link in the description of course for today's fitness video and that'll take you to our um, media savvy workout playlist where the majority of the exercises are just body weight um, I think there was only one or two that I, that I did where I used any equipment from in the house and even that was a couple of tins of soup to uh, replicate some dumbbells so maybe even then have a look have a look through see what exercises I either do body weight or maybe I'll do them with a bit of kit um, or some tins of soup in this case so um, yeah by all means have a look through explore 
and 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 take some of the exercises for your own for your own circuits. You know, you might as well. It's all to help us expand um, our exercise database, our exercise library, really. You know, um, stuff that we feel confident doing, um, and can you know rely on at other times in the future, even when we're training alone. So yes, um, check out today's fitness video. Um, even if you're not feeling that one in particular, like I say, you might get some inspiration for your circuit cards or have a look through the work, like the actual playlist as well, because there's um, different videos with different benefits, you know, different focus, um, depending on what um, sort of impact on the body I'm trying to have. Um, and yeah, next week, like I say, we're back to um, crack on with them circuit cards and we'll be back next Monday at the same time, um, 10 o'clock, give or take. Um, we always seem to have technical problems on a Monday, but yeah, 10 o'clock, give or take, um, till about 12, half 12, including the um, fitness video as well. Um, so with that in mind, guys, um, yeah, just start having a think about your exercises um, that we're going to use for our circuit cards. And like I say, check out the day's fitness video as well. Um, in the meantime, like I say, drop me an email if you need a hand with anything. Um, you've probably already got my email, but if you don't, it is in the uh, description below the video as well, guys. Um, okay, so you know where I am in the meantime, if you need a little bit of help, um, maybe a couple of pointers or whatever. Um, and until then, guys, until next Monday, um, I hope everybody stays safe, look after yourselves and everyone around you. Have a good week. Um, as always, thank you for learning and spending your time with me, your savvy, and we will see you next week right back here. Um, until then, guys, take care.